So this is the brush that we are going to alter together. Uh, we've got the plan for mixed media minutes and we are going to use s some of the new products that were just released and uh, maybe you would like to see how they work in real life. So we've got this old brush, just the same as this one. Nothing really interesting, just a very simple cheap brush and then some of the Prima products to go. So thank you so much for joining. Just let me now get ready and we are going to start in about one or two minutes. So I think we are all ready now. And uh, this is again my very messy table. I'm going to switch to the top <laughs> uh, view for the studio. And again, thank you so much for joining me. This is Finavar with Primo Marketing and I'm Primo Product Designer and I'm going to show you how you can alter a brush this style, this way, using one of my new sets of texture fantasy rust paste. So this is going to be really, really fun. Look, I started gluing some of the elements already because uh, I would like to save you some of the boring steps and I'm going to put my apron on so I won't ruin my pretty dress because uh, that would be really a shame and these colors that are uh, part of the rust uh, paste they are really uh, strong strong colors so it would be great to protect <laughs> your clothes if you can so what do we need to create project like that? First of all, you need a brush. As I was trying to show you, just a simple brush. This is three inches, but if you have bigger, you will have even more space to work on, which is fun. As you can see, you may use some of the metal embellishments, but you can easily replace these embellishments with uh, some uh, chipboard or some uh, plastic or even paper flowers from Prima. If you are not planning to put your brush into a lot of use, it's going to be just the core, it's going to work. I also have some elements which are from Prima Molds. These are already <laughs> um, used for something else, like this one was uh, probably waxed for some other project. So I was thinking I will just reuse it now and I'm going to stick it to my brush. So what would be the best embellishments? You need something dimensional, for example, the flowers are going to be uh, the, um, the this very visible part of the project, really dimensional, and we need something flat as well. So for the flat ones, I'm going to use some of my mechanicals. They are really great because they have beautiful you know, spiky cogs in them, really, really cool, especially when you like to get a look which is a little bit more rusty. And this is uh, the mechanical set, which is called Steampunk Gears. The second one would be a good choice, Rustic Gears. They are rusty already, so uh, in some cases you probably won't be even happy to paint them. So you can uh, also try uh, this, uh, this set. And if not, you always have a chance to find something in your rubbish box on your table. I'm sure you are going to have a lot of fun with that. Uh, for the smaller elements, if you have a closer look, you will see their little screw heads. They are a set of mechanicals that is called um, mini hardware. So there are little screws and uh, nuts in there. Our alternative would be the mini stars as well, it would be very, very good. And there is a little bit of bling, and for the bling I was using my new Art Pebbles, Sugar Art Pebbles. They are absolutely gorgeous, and they are going to be my choice. You don't need a lot, it's going to be just an accent in the very, very last part of the project. Uh, yes, as you can see, I keep collecting my leftovers from the open packages, so I have them always on my table here and I can easily um, access. 
Uh, for the flowers, there are sets of lotus flowers. They're very nice ones. Uh, the other option would be this set of the mechanical flowers. They're going to work uh, really nicely. This is just called uh, metal embellishments. <laughs> I have no idea why. But let's, let's say these are mechanical flowers. So uh, let's start. And these would be the elements. Now, for the mediums, we are going to need some heavy body gel or the other option would be 3D gloss gel or 3D matte gel. It doesn't matter. Uh, any of these would work. Heavy body gel is just the fastest and the easiest for me to use. So that would be just perfect choice. Uh, a little bit of clear gesso or any other gesso you may have on your table. Clear is uh, going to be the fastest to use because it's basically invisible gesso uh, that is going to dry very easily on your project. And uh, some white acrylic paint. I'm going to use uh, white impasto paint. The final, the most important is the set of the um, texture fantasy rust paste. This is this set, as you can see. Uh, it's called Junkyard Treasures. So there are three colors and we are going to use three of them in this um, in this project. So that will be it. This is what we need. And uh, if you would like your friends to join, give them a shout on Facebook that we started already. And of course, if you can't stay with us the whole project, remember this is going to be recorded and you can watch it later on my Facebook page. So please uh, make sure that you are... Um, all covered. I'm just going to plug in just in case you know you don't want to be out of power in the middle of the project. So in the first step when you're planning to make a dimensional project uh, you would need to think about what kind of textures do you need. This is small surface you don't have much space to work on the uh, bottom layers if you have a big one, you can use some stencils or you can use some texture paste to start. But here it's so packed with embellishments. I was just uh, adding um, the big elements and then filling the gaps with the smaller ones. There were no steps before. So it's really not much cheating. So you can see I started already with the, um, with the big elements. So this and this comes from the IOD Prima mold. They were made from paper clay or this was like this um, lightweight um, Fimo air dry, I think. So they are a little bit flexible and that is one of the good things too about them. They are really easy. And then I started to glue the bigger elements. So I've got my two flowers and my smaller flower in and I'm going to use my heavy body gel to add more of the elements to the composition. I'm not going to put the smallest ones. The, I'm not going to put the pebbles and the rust, uh, rusty uh, screw heads yet. They're going to be my last step because I want them to be just touched with the color, not adding too much. So I've got some of the different sizes of the uh, cogs in this set so I'm going to find something that is going to work nicely. This is a little bit too big but I think this would be perfect. I'm taking my heavy body gel and I'm going to put a blob of gel and I'm going to glue it in. For the extra texture I may always add another cog but I think this is going to look much nicer on the tops. Okay this one goes here. It's all about balance. So if you feel that your composition is a little bit too empty, you probably need to add something else to it. This is too big, but maybe this one will be perfect. Hmm. No. Nope. Give me a second. The plan is to add something more. I have to remember to save some space also for the pebbles which are coming later as one of the last steps so I can't get too carried away with the elements okay so we need something for here 
two flowers. Maybe I need just something like another flower, in fact. Let's take one of the lotus flowers. This heavy body gel that uh, I, you can see now, this is the product which is my all, all like really like my favorite of the favorite because this would be the one that you can fix the hmm, spaceship with really because it's so sturdy and it's so strong that you can use it with almost any kind of embellishment and this is going to stay mm -hmm. okay i have space here adding the last element I'm trying to create some kind of flow in the project. I'm trying, I will explain what I mean in a moment by the flow. But before I'm taking one of my old brushes, dipping that in the water and removing the excess of the gel from the inside of the flowers. It's not a big deal in this project because we are going to use the paste which has the texture in it already. So all the imperfections, later will get covered so you don't have to worry that much it's just a matter of the um, design and when i mean flow you can see the elements are going like this like this like a zigzag so it is always nice in balance this handle is going to be embellished later i really want to repeat this idea with the gem on the top so this is going to get uh this nice detail on the top and these elements are going to create the flow on the bottom of the brush this is the plan and of course you can turn it around and make another side you know decorate the other side as well this is really up to you and it's really really fun you can make so many variations using different kinds of embellishments this is really imagination is the limit and if you are worried that um the elements are moving I have to recommend really heavy body gel because this is the best friend for you when you are making dimensional collage because even when the elements are still wet like the elements are still sitting in the wet gel they are not moving too much and it dries really quickly so when I'm going to take my heat gun now and dry it it's going to zap the elements in place so you don't have to wait forever which speed up, speeds up the process uh, really nicely. So I'm going to use my mat for drying. And if you have any questions about heavy body gel, I'm very happy to answer. Okay, let's have a look. Well, it's very hot now. So when you're checking, you have to be really careful. You can see this brush is not a big um, element. Like This is kind of a simple thing to decorate, but uh, we have a lot of metal and a lot of, um, um, let's say, hmm, resin elements here, which are not so easy to paint. And we are going to put the texture kind of product on the top. So it's going to be much easier if you're going to take any gesso you can find. For example, I'm using clear gesso and give it a one thin coat of the gesso on the top of everything. So I'm taking one of my brushes and before I'm going to use the paste, I will put a thin coat of clear gesso on the top, especially uh, of the metal and any other slippery elements in my composition. I saved space for my screw head and um, uh, these little um, pebbles with the sugar finish. So that should be all fine. You can see what happened. With this short drying, I'm now able to touch my elements with the brush and they are not coming off. This is this magic I was mentioning. This is the magic. So this is why I really <laughs> believe this is the best gel ever. That should be more than enough. Look. I just want to make sure everything is covered. Oh, this is the only one which is moving. I have to make sure it's going to stick a little bit better. So, clear gesso is different to black gesso and white gesso. First of all, it is much thinner. It was designed to be invisible coat that stops your uh, paints or your uh, inks from soaking into the surface. 
and it's beautifully matte finish, but it's smooth matte. It is not going to have a lot of grit, a lot of tooth in it. So it's really working miracles when it comes to art journaling. And on the projects, when you would like to see the basic colors, you'd like to see the bottom layers, this is your solution. For example, if you plan to journal on a beautiful vintage paper, but you'd like to make this paper sealed and stronger and more uh, durable, that would be your best friend. Clear just so it's your best friend. And um, it really uh, makes work, uh, work so much easier. The same when it comes to the glossy images from the magazines or the glossy photos, it turns them matte and um, absolutely easy to work on. So before I'm going to start the application, I have to dry my gesso and this flower. Checking again. Let's hope for the best. You should be drying a little bit longer than I do. Now, if you uh, never tried these, I have to warn you, they are something kind of funny because this is the paste that is imitation of the rust. Of course, you can't tell this is the rust color, but the first original set was made to imitate the rusty colors. And these are following the same formula, which means they are very fast drying. And you can see they are having this gritty finish. They have... Uh, special soft sand inside that is going to create the look of the really really um, interesting and beautiful uh, coarse finish. You can see it better here I hope. I'm really proud of this part. I really loved it. So in the first step when you are applying these you don't have to really worry about the design that much because you can put new layer on the top to adjust it to your needs because they work like acrylic paint. They are permanent after drying. So what happens for us now? Uh, we need some brushes and hopefully you have some older brushes. You can see I was using these ones because they are, hmm, I would say very um, hmm, coarse <laughs> and it's very, very easy to uh, damage your brush when you uh, forget to uh, wash it on time. When I was creating the project I wanted to make the color flow from the dark to the light. I used some of the acrylic paint on the top for the white color and then I was applying the um, purples and then this red and finally the blue. I'm going to start with the red in the middle and this is going to be quite ugly for some time because this is not going to look like the final uh, yet. This is going to be just something in between to start and a very good trick I can give you now really if you'd like to work with the colors and you would like to blend color into color is to act quickly which means if you're planning to blend a little bit here with the purple don't wait until you paint everything red if that makes any sense <laughs> now start with the purple right away right and then blend it into your red so they can work together so you can see how easy it is if you're going wait for too long you're going simply to paint purple on the red because the red will be dry already. So you can see how easy it is to get this uh, gradation of the color. It's almost like ombre, right? Uh, so this is one of the tricks. Well, and make sure you clean your brush, right? This is another important information. If you're working with these, they're really easy to mix and to blend, but Give yourself this quick moment, okay? Make sense? So now we are going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to use the red here first. Whoa, red, not blue. Okay, so this burnt sienna color. <laughs> and of course, don't forget about the side of the brush. We won't talk about the other side during this video. I hope you will forgive me, but you can practice on the other side if you feel afraid. Okay, 
and the same here on the flower and I go I'm going to switch to blue just in a moment so it will be easier to blend color into color hmm. yes for the paste the old brushes or if you make a big project I can really recommend the dubbing brushes like that but because this is um, a little bit too big for this project I'm using one of my oldest brushes that allow me to get into the smaller details or if you can get the small set the small set will do really do the job here okay now uh, and another important information is these will dry a little bit darker than you can see them in your uh, packaging so don't be surprised so this blue is going to get darker if you can compare the colors you can see the color on the brush is a bit darker right so I'm taking now this blue and quickly applying that and trying to blend it into the red as well from the other side so I don't have to do so many layers later because of course you can add the layers in the next step and dry it and one more step and dry it and yeah but then you may lose a lot of details but once you start blending wet into wet it is not that complicated you just need less of the layers to get the look that you really like mm -hmm. that will be the first step now I didn't repaint white yet so I have to remember that that um, I need to do the same blending using the acrylic paint and purple color then we will dry it and we will do some touches to the color to make the adjustment to make it look more natural and artsy so far so good remember to put the brushes back into water or into paste because otherwise they will be dry in a very short moment you can see how rich the, pa the paste is so please when you are using it make sure that you are cleaning your tools because um, especially blue is going to be staining your work surface now I'm going to get impasto white and I will do the blending on the other side hello hello good to see you all thank you so much for joining if you have any questions I'm here to answer now because we are uh, I think I have to <laughs> say goodbye to this tube of paint because it's almost empty oh finally uh, let's get a brush so we are missing the last color and this is the white So I'm taking a bit of impasto paint, I'm repeating the same step, I'm adding the color from the other side and because we would like to blend it into this purple, which is dry of course, you can see I'm just layering that on the top, I would have to repeat a bit of this painting with the purple. I'm able to pick up a bit of this color but this is not enough for sure you can see I would like to have the better gradation so now I'm taking again the this lavender rust paste the brush and then rubbing that on the top and maybe it will be much easier just to do it this way fingers are your best tools I think Mm, a bit more of white stay there Ta -da! that 
is coming together nicely. Now, before we are going to do the touches to it, we have to really give it a good drying because if we won't dry it, it is going to be mixing and mixing. This is not exactly what we want. So we will take the heat gun and dry the surface first. Checking again. So, so far what we did we took the embellishments we liked, some of the metal uh, mechanicals, like this, some elements from the molds, and we used the heavy body gel to glue it all to the surface. Once it was dry, we, we used the heat gun to, uh, to dry it, we were adding a coat of clear gesso to prime it before adding the um, coat of the rust paste. And then, I'm using these three colors that come from the Junkyard Treasure set. This is the Texture Fantasy Rust Paste and coloring my uh, brush. This is kind of the texture paste that imitates the rusty look on your surfaces. Now it's time to start some serious fun. We need some water to make the colors drip and we need to play. My point is to put a bit of the colors into uh, selected places so this is not going to be so organized because so far it is a little bit too organized i'm going to start with a bit of this reddish bar burnt sienna color and i would like to add that a little bit more here but i'm going to work with water the same happens here i would like to add some water and it's going to drip beautifully these colors start to look much more natural when you let them drip and do whatever they want. So I'm going to do this step also here. Mm -hmm. So this way, this looks like rust is going on my blue color. This is one of the ideas. The second is, of course, to add a little bit of this purple, I'm taking the purple now, to highlight some of the details. It's going to work almost like adding the waxing on the top, right? And then, again, a bit of water. So this is a really wet technique. That's why it's important that you are going to uh, dry your embellishments and your bottom layers before you are doing that. When it comes to adding water, I never use distilled water. I always use tap water and we don't have the best one here in Ireland and my products are fine. So I would not be worried that much. So you can see the drips look quite promising. What I would like to do, I would like to show the shapes of these a little bit more. So first of all, as I told you, you can try to use your lighter colors to highlight the edges of the elements, right? This is like adding a tiny bit of the color here and there. The second thing is you can use the darkest color and go around the elements to highlight just as you like it. Okay, so I'm going to take the smallest possible brush. Right? And I'm going to take this blue. And this blue is going to go around my embellishments. and inside as well. And of course, well, we need water. Blue is probably one of the most visible colors, but it's going to add beautiful detail. You can see what is happening now here. 
this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted this blue to show the shape of this embellishment. And I'm going to add a little bit of the color here as well. Not too much though, just a bit. Just look how pretty it is. So this is the final drying and then we are going to add the last ornaments. So this is what I wanted to get. You can see I really have a lot of the beautiful colors here, almost dry, but now I'm not closing the jars yet. I would like to add some of the sugar pebbles. These are the finishing touches and I would like to add some screws to make it look a little bit more mechanical. I've got uh, some extra ones in here, so let me take them out for you and if you look at the final result you can see these gems are not so clean because they were far too shiny for this project so what I did I glued it in uh, the project and then I made it dirty with the rust paste a little bit so let's say this one is going to be oh it's very shiny let's say this one goes here so we take a bit of the heavy body gel again, we're going to stick it and press it. Uh-huh, more of the gel. And press it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm taking uh, next colors. I think this one would be quite nice in here somewhere, like in here. Perfect. And then smaller one, maybe here. Mm -hmm. One more. And finally, the last one in there. Just a bit of gems. So they would be so visible if I didn't make them dirty. Uh oh, my fingers are too big. I can't get it in the right place. So we've got the elements which are adding the extra bling, except this one doesn't want to stay, so we need more gel. So now it is going to stay perfectly. And for some extra touches, here are the screw heads. So it looks a little bit more steampunky so you can see I'm using quite a lot of gel again and in the last step I'm going to cover these imperfections with the rust paste anyway so I'm not worried I will just use the brush to remove the excess So something like this for now, almost ready. And we are adding the last touches. Let's hope they are in place. Okay, so now from here to here, I have to add a bit of rust to finally adjust the color just the way I would like to have it. Oh, you can see even in the latest drying, so I'm putting some water. This is very important with the rust paste. 
you have to remember to mix them before closing and if you see they're getting thicker spray some water in right and close them tightly we're close i'm testing new solution for closing now i'm testing the leads like this to go inside and i'm sure this is going to extend the um storage time for them but it's still in testing so we are very close to the final solution for you because i know some people were having hard time with the drying of these you can see what I'm doing. I'm just adding contrasting colors of the pastes a little bit in the round. Yeah. And then maybe a bit of this blue here as well on the top. I'm basically making them dirty. This is what I wanted to get, right? So they are not going to be so dramatically shiny anymore. And the last one is here. I'm using the red and the purple. The purple is really light, so you don't have to be afraid to use this color. And then water. So it's going to be visible, but just a little bit. Well, I said a little bit and then I removed most of it. Okay, so this is basically ready. Just giving the last dry. Finished. So you can see playing with the rust sets. It's very, very fun and it's very easy. And you can spend quite a lot of time getting to the color palette that you like. But perfection here is really overrated. You don't really get perfect look using these products because they're naturally coarse and naturally they have to be a little bit uh, random in the application. It is not possible to get exactly the same look twice. Just simply not possible because you want them to run, you want them to create textures. So even if you're trying to recreate the project, use similar color palette, in the very end, there will be different drips, there will be a little bit different balance of the colors. And this is fine. And what is great about these, they are very versatile. So you can use them on any surface, which means you could see it was wood, it was a uh, bristle and then there were metal embellishments as well and this was uh, some kind of air dry fimo and this is going to add this crazy distressed very heavy grunge look to almost anything so you can make your uh, chipboards look rusty or very very uh, textured you can use your fabric and you can use your um, Met, well, plastic embellishments as well. So just the last look, I'm going to put them on the black surface so you can see them better. This is the final look. And we were using the set of these uh, Junkyard Treasures uh, Rust uh, sets. We were using uh, white impasto paint or any other white gesso. We were using clear gesso. We were using heavy body gel for gluing and finally some beautiful uh, sugar pebbles. Let me know in the comments if you have any more questions, but you can see this is very, very simple. You can try it and please don't give up if you will not like the first layer. It's not possible to make the first layer beautiful and uh, just you know perfect in your opinion it is just like the bottom canvas that you are going to change with the next steps try to experiment with dripping the water so it's good to have a big sprayer nearby try to experiment with layering and rubbing off the um, excess if it's going to be too uh, too much in one place if it's half wet you can still rub it off a little bit uh, this is acrylic medium, which means you can add some water to it and I really recommend if it's getting thicker 
adding such uh, ingredients as simple tap water is going to make miracles but if you can close it really tightly some people put the plastic lid like this inside or the shrink wrap it's going to help and you can put them upside down right and then it's going to be even better because less of the air is going to get inside and don't use your favorite brushes as well remember this is going to be a very hard time for this brush to survive something like this so every time ah water this is how i just make sure they're going to stay wet and the last one these uh these sets you can of course mix and match these are just color inspirations i made for you and um, these colors go beautifully together you can check the other sets as well they are called not called northern lights old walls and um <laughs> ah, um, uh, coral uh, um, amone anemone and coral so they are like underwater colors sorry uh, and uh, you can easily take one jar from one set and the second from the second set and you're going to get beautiful results as well. So let me now say goodbye to you all. Uh, oh, that's me again. So thank you so much for joining and I hope this is going to convince you that really the rust pastes, the texture pastes are for everybody. You can use them in a big project for creating uh, this beautiful huge textures, but you can also work on something smaller and nicer or just alter your embellishment before adding uh, them to your project. It is just working nicely. Because this is a combination product, something which was designed as... Um, perfect mix between paint and texture paste they work with all the other acrylic mediums so if you have gel medium and you would like to mix them with it it is going to work if you would like to add some water to it it is going to help as well to get it like not so thick and extend the working time as well and of course if you would like to um, try and uh, add some extra color into it you can mix one uh, one color with another very easily, just like you do with acrylic paint. So don't be afraid, experiment, play, and for more inspiration, don't forget to visit finevar.com, which is the blog with the fresh tutorials every Monday and every Friday, and on Wednesday, it's usually old me with some ideas or uh, projects. And of course, our Instagram accounts, which is finevar and finevar studio and Finnevar group uh, in on Facebook. And don't forget Prima Marketing has beautiful website and page with amazing projects for you. So thank you again. Thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to uh, tell your friends about this video. I'm going to make sure this is going to stay on this page. And I would love to see your altered whatever it's maybe not brushes maybe something else i would love to see them please if you post them on instagram tag me so i have a chance if you post them here on facebook tag me so i have a chance to see them because believe me i have a lot of friends on facebook and it's much easier if you tag my name on the project thank you so much for being such great support you are wonderful people and it's so good to see you again in my studio thank you bye bye Thank you, Sharon, for the help. It was a great time with you guys.